Hello, it is Sean from the Siege Captain, right back at it again with another catapult video. Today, we're going to be building the upright frame that stops the arm when it swings up. We're also going to be rebuilding the little torsion wheels where the ropes are going to be going through. So come right along and see what we achieve today. Here we're just using more treated 2x8s for the main arms going up. Cut them down to length. We're running into an issue building this catapult living in the northern United States in Minnesota. Um, Normally we build when my cameraman and editor, good friend Ryan, gets off work. He comes over around 4.30, 5 o'clock. But now it's dark outside at that time and it's cold. We can't really build this thing in the garage because it's too big. So we'll see what we come up with. But for now, just expect more catapult videos and we might have to put it on hold until spring. Cutting the crossbars here. This is what the arm's actually going to hit when it swings up. I didn't have another 2x8, so we just cut two 2x4s two for the top. This is me standing on a sketchy stool trying to get wood down from where my dad had it stored. So where I position those upright arms, you can see a little bit of overhang, about like a quarter of an inch or so. That was so that the wheels had enough room to sit behind it and allow the ropes to go through where we're going to cut the holes in the 2x8s. Trying to figure out how we're going to attach these to the frame. They didn't have long enough screws to drive through all the way, so we had to cut some extra 2x4s to put right there, as you can see. Kind of jank, but isn't everything on this catapult kind of jank? It's weird to see the top of your head. You can go like your whole life without seeing that sucker. And here I am seeing the top of my head quite frequently. There's the upright frame. That's what the arm's going to swing up to. We're going to put some kind of padding on it. That's just an example. So when the arm hits it, it doesn't snap itself. Here we added an extra 2x4 and some extra screws for support on this winch because it's going to have a lot of force pulling down. So we added screws on both sides and that little 2x4 underneath. And I was pulling up on it pretty darn hard. and It wasn't moving at all. Here's a demonstration of how the arm is supposed to work. It'll come down like that and then just swing upward. It gets stopped by that and the projectile will keep flying. All right. Uh, we had these torsion wheels here and I was going to make a ratcheting system for them. But in order to do so, I would need like a bearing or something sitting on the inside so that it wouldn't move around and move away from the keeper that's going to stop it from unratcheting. So instead, I decided just to make regular wheels with some uh, pegs in it. You'll see what I mean at the end of the episode. But for now, this is just me cutting more wheels. My bandsaw was making like a ton of smoke and I couldn't really figure out why. And I didn't investigate it for a little while. So you can see all that smoke coming out of it. Uh, just so you guys know, in case anyone didn't know, the reason why it's called a bandsaw is because in the 1998 World Championship Woodworking held in Belgium, Germany, or wow, Berlin, Germany, my bad. Uh, the person who used the saw, it was unconventional at the time, but it did such a good job, they actually had to ban the saw from the woodworking championships because it could just do everything, hence the name bandsaw. I always thought that was quite interesting. I learned that in my woodworking class in high school. Just 
changing out the sanding belt on my belt sander. Oh, fun fact, the reason why it's called a belt sander is because the little sanding sheets, they look like belts. Here I am just making it actually circular rather than whatever the bandsaw did to the thing. I'm gonna use my favorite tool, the hole saw. I'm so sick of using this thing. It's a pain. It's a hole saw. Why can't it go the whole way through? I have to flip the piece of wood around and go back at it. That's the original one, that's the new one. So yeah, I finally got around to actually looking at my bandsaw and seeing what was wrong with it and tried fixing it. Did not work. Lots of smoke still coming out. eventually got around to adjusting the guards because the blade was just flexing too much. And that was the whole issue. Once that was done, everything was a lot easier. Actually, I think this is the point where I didn't do it properly yet. There's still a lot of smoke coming out. Anyway, I got those cut out and now round this one over. I'm going to have to use the hole saw again to cut another hole in this. These are going to be used as cranking wheels, as I said before, and we're going to put some spokes in them to try to give us leverage. I tried using WD-40 to see if it made it easier, and eh, it kind of did. Sucks doing it either way, so... I tried cutting a groove down the middle, did a poor job of it. It ended up working out, but could have done a much better job. This is where those little metal rods are going to sit in, where the ropes are going to go over them. Just like that. I didn't center it very well. We just went with it anyway. So here I'm measuring out a depth that we're going to want the pegs to go into the wood. And then I'm going to be drilling them in. And putting the little metal pegs in. Just like that. I first started using this hacksaw and the blade was dull as heck. Then my dad came out and, like he usually does, suggests something much better. Using this thing, I was terrified because you see all those videos or like images of the welding disc or the grinding discs just exploding on people. But be a man. If a disc explodes on you, oh well. That's the plan we're going for. So those pegs will give us a point of leverage. Then we can just use some kind of metal rod to twist the torsion up. We just got to cut out about 12 of them. can't see my head, but I was definitely engaging the safety squints, so don't worry about my eyes, I was plenty safe. Got the rods cut out, holding them with a heat resistant glove just to grind them down into a round shape so they go in easier.
Now comment below if you think these wheels will actually work when we put some force on them and try to use them to twist up the torsion. So arm goes across, the ropes will go over that. We glue these in eventually, but for now I just kind of tapped it in place. And that's where it'll sit on the frame, the ropes will go over it. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. Um, stick, stick around to see how she goes.